Joining me now is Massachusetts Congressman Seth Moulton, a Marine veteran who served four tours in Iraq. He serves on the Armed Services Committee and has been leading the way on this whole issue of these Afghanistan people who've worked for us. Congressman, it's startling to see, to hear how fast the Taliban is advancing. Also, that the Intelligence Committee believes the Afghan government could collapse in six months after the U.S. leaves. What's your reaction to that? It's, it's startling in some ways, but this is exactly the worst case scenario uh, that we've been telling the administration they need to prepare for. Look, the Biden administration actually delayed our withdrawal from the date that was put in motion by President Trump. And it's very obvious now that the Trump team did no planning whatsoever uh, for the withdrawal itself or the evacuation of our allies. These, these amazing Afghans who risked their lives, not just for their country, but for ours as well. Nonetheless, it's now on the shoulders of the Biden administration to make this evacuation happen. We don't have any more time to go through the regular visa process. It takes about 800 days on average to, to process your average special immigrant visa. That's the program under which our Afghan allies were able to come to the United States. We only have 80 days until our withdrawal, not 800. So we have to have an evacuation. And as I said to Secretary Austin the other day when he came before our, our hearing in the House, I said, why have you not started this evacuation already? And the issue, and did you get a real answer? I didn't get a real answer, but I will tell you this, that Secretary Austin, as a veteran, and General Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, as an active duty Army officer, it was very clear from their testimony that they understand the urgency. They understand the moral imperative, to borrow Chairman Milley's words, of getting these Afghans out and getting them out now. We made a promise to these heroes that we would have their backs. Uh, and, and we've got to live up to that promise, not just for them, but for every future American serviceman or woman who has to make that promise to an ally on the ground in some future conflict. But we don't want 10, 20, 30 years from now uh, for people to be looking back at America and how we dealt with the Afghans and saying, no, I'm not going to work with you, America because you abandon your allies. Look what you did to the Afghans. Is that commitment from the president, which he delivered to that shouted question yesterday, is that also for the families? Because you're talking about at least 18,000 of these drivers, translators, others who helped us. And then with their families, you're talking about 50,000 and up. And some of these people have been waiting, right. as uh, you well know, they've been waiting 10 years while this visa program has not been working for them. I got a call from the White House this past weekend, and uh, the, the round numbers that they were talking about were 70,000. Uh, that basically accounts for an average of 3.5 family members for every one uh, of the 18,000 who are already in the queue. I don't know if that's the exact right number, but that's what we should be anticipating. And I assume that the president's commitment is to that a full number of, of personnel. Obviously, if you have a, you know someone uh, like me, who's uh, got two young kids at home, a wife. I'm not going to leave my wife and kids uh, to come to America. We've got to get them out as well, or they too will be threatened by the Taliban. And make no mistake, the Taliban's pretty clear here about what they're going to do. They will hunt these Afghan-American heroes down. Uh, they will kill them. And if they can, they'll uh, rape and kill their wife and kids in front of them uh, before they cut off their heads. That's not mincing words. That's exactly what's on the line here. And that's a spectacle that no one uh, wants to see. And are we talking about bringing them to Guam, to uh, other countries provisionally while we get this visa program in shape? Uh, yesterday, I released a detailed plan for how you can conduct this evacuation to Guam. And the reason we looked at Guam is because it's been done in the past. Uh, we evacuated about twice as many as 70,000 uh, Afghans, twice as many uh, as that South Vietnamese refugees at the end of the Vietnam War. Uh, we evacuated the Kurds uh, to Guam as well. It's a very convenient place to process the visas, to go through the longer security checks and, uh, and other things that need to happen before these refugees are able to come to the United States. It's a U.S. territory. They have the facilities and they have the experience to do this. So we laid out this detailed plan for the administration. So no, lo no longer could they say, hey, we need to work up a plan. Look, we have a plan. We've given it to you. Frankly, I don't care if they use our plan or they come up with a better one. They just need to start this right away. And the Taliban, or meanwhile, as they proceed, are taking our equipment, our tanks. They're going to be fully armed with U.S. equipment. 
That's right. So they're going to be descending on uh, Kabul as well. Uh, some of the additional things I've asked for the, from the administration uh, since their announcement yesterday are we, we need to have a clear plan for how you're going to get Afghans from other parts of the country to Kabul. Assuming that the main evacuation would take place from Kabul International Airport, we need to get Afghans from around the country into that central evacuation plan uh, place. We obviously need to understand exactly where they're going to go. And we need to have someone put in charge of this effort. Uh, there needs to be a clear commander of what will eventually be a somewhat significant uh, uh, doable, uh, but nonetheless large uh, military operation. But finally, I want a commitment from the administration that they will see this mission through until the end. Uh, that's got to be clear. They need to get everyone out, everyone out, every last person, every last family member who wants to come, who's in danger, whose life is threatened by the Taliban. We need to get them out. And we can't get to a point a couple months from now where they start saying, oh, look, it's too dangerous. We don't have time for this anymore. No, we need to see this mission through. I believe that people like Secretary Austin and General Milley are committed to that. It certainly sounds like uh, President Biden is as well. That's exactly the kind of commitment that we need going forward. Now let's get the plan in motion. Well, Congressman, I know you got a plane to catch. Thanks so much for stopping to talk to us. I really appreciate it. Thank Safe you, Andrea. Travel, sir.